Hi. Good morning. Today I'm going to make a video about all the things that are wrong with my bike packing device. And there's plenty of things that I need to address. So I built this bike the first time around about two years ago and used it for about half a year maybe. And then it get moved and then I use it again and then it get moved and I use it again a little bit. But then I decided to really take it serious and make a proper tool that will be fit for bikepacking. Namely, I would like to cycle to Santiago de Chile, probably starting here in Istanbul or maybe I fly to Portugal first, we shall see. But uh, today is the bike about the bike. Uh, the, sorry, the video about the bike. Uh, apologize for the mummification here. Um, it's still very cold. It's been raining all night long. So yeah, uh, it's still fresh. Let me take you out of the stand. Let's have a look at what's all wrong here. The first thing is the headset is loose and uh, since I don't have three hands, I can demonstrate. And uh, also, I'm using a 90 millimeter rise on a 700 millimeter Bar, which is plenty so I'm trying to eliminate the super ugly looks here just a touch I just seen a burst of cable here that must have happened when the bike fell down so I'll need to replace that cable too so but let's um, sorry this is the three-handed the three-handed issue here I have this super cheap weight stem that looks totally naff in its red anodization so i will see what i can do about that probably polish some of the easy to be polished surfaces and that will lose a little bit of the height and make this hopefully look a little bit less grandfathery so we'll see what that gives us so that's definitely one thing and then i can address the loose headset um, this is obviously a threaded fork with a quill stem adapter and you see that the something is not quite right here uh, as I said the bike fell over and some things are not uh, not as they should be so we'll need to see what's going on I'm generally quite happy about what I assembled and especially myself uh, turned spacers which gives me a little bit of extra height I think it's about 18 millimeters this gives me also the quite fat tire gives me extra height so I've done this if I zoom out a little bit to give me as much height with some readily available elements so tire spacer um, Rise, rise, uh, and quite a rise in the stem, in the short stem, and then the 90 millimeter riser bar. So I think I can live with a little bit of extra. What I'm realizing here, riding along, that sometimes an extra hand position would be good. So I will bring out these little things here, bolt them on somewhere there, and see how that actually fares. Sorry about the color. Yes, the color, the colors, the colors are a mess here. I've been fiddling around with different things, but I did decided that I want to go a bit calmer. So I've tried a couple of different colors of grips and I think I'm going to go for that. The sparkly black. It's black, but it's not so boring black. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's start from the beginning. Headset needs tighten. Uh, stem, I will change it. Add some other grips. I'm going to actually also settle for some brake levers since I am running a eight, one by eight. I only need one shifter and that I will keep separate. So I like the Z, Z shifter. It's a, not sure, I think it might be a 10 speed shifter and I'm using eight gears so that causes a little bit of an issue but uh, we shall see about that anyway let's talk about these grips I will drill them 
from the bottom for some beautification holes and for some weight so that's what I'll do next grips brake levers I have two the same then don't really like this one here anyway so I'll use those these are quite ergonomic I don't know this seems to be a brand unbranded item I haven't found at least I'm using the Shimano whatever you call these things here okay the cable ah okay this case this was an experiment and these are the kind of like plastic vegetable and fish carrying cases that you find plentiful here in Turkey people basically seem to throw them away it's a bit of a mess environmentally speaking but uh, nevertheless these are readily available everywhere I have made it the smallest version I can think of it from these and uh, this one is actually too small and it's also too soft I can demonstrate here how soft this is and that's no good so you have um, too much weight in there it'll deform and then eventually if it's too much stuff in there it will fall out so also you know that to cater for you to be careful so my bike doesn't fall into the pool yeah exactly <laughs> sit there tight my little bicycle okay I want to stabilize this a little bit and I'm going to use this mounting position and then the only thing that I need to engineer is, is how I will actually bolt this onto here. Um, also, I want to give this some beautification. I think I have some really nice gray primer that will do that. And then in order to fix this, I will use that piece. Cut it in half. It gives me two items to fix this. Yes. Ah, and uh, as in for getting rid of some too much color, I will also go for this. You know, this is too much color on this bike in my opinion. I also should find another bottle cage. And this is basically the group of issues I want to tackle today. I have also an issue with this rear rack due to being a bit too rambunctious so you see it's not centered um, I can't seem to bend it so I need to look at the fixing points and what the hell creates this off-centeredness another thing that I found is the original reflector I'd like a reflector so that I'm more visible in the dark let's see what my treasure case the old still should be that. I'm a little bit worried about this falling. Please don't fall. Okay, so here's the item. I think this actually came from this very mud guard. So, and I will give me a reflector. There you have it. Um, rear brakes, fantastic. I love these brakes. I don't need the same one in the front, I'm good for braking power, but I definitely rely on this rear. The best rim brake in my books ever made, minus hydraulics, and uh, I do detest hydraulics in the braking system because it's too inflexible. What else? In order to delete some coloring, yeah, but that's not a, a job for now. I will polish the side. I'll polish that part. That'll be something I will do. But that's definitely not on the cards anytime soon. I might take some some of the graphics off. If there's too much graphics on there, what do you think? Let me know. And uh, eventually, I will build a new rear wheel. But that's again another story. So the rear wheel will finally be able to take my brand new micro shift uh, 11 to 40 cassette as I'm finding that in this mountainous area here 
I could be doing with extra low gear. And right now, I have fitted a 36 front tooth wheel. Of course, I could just do a 34, but I don't really want to do that because I also don't want to just challenge the top end. It gets too slow then, you spin out. So I'll leave the 36 and I will put extra teeth on the back via an 8-speed microchip cassette. And for that I need another hub because this hub does not gel. Even though this is 8-speed and the other one is 8-speed, this microchip 8-speed cassette is building higher than the Shimano, which I think is totally weird. Um, but hey ho, so I will use a wider hub. Okay, 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 okay. Not sure which ones of these graphics shall be taken down. We'll find out. We'll do something. Let's start color wise with the green grips will die and the purple QR will die and the, the purple bottle cage will die and some of the yellow will disappear and maybe then maybe then color wise will be fine okay i'll conclude this for now i'll go back inside and start working and give you a part two of what all is wrong with my touring bike